Hello everybody and welcome to this training on workflow reports. So today we'll talk about workflow reports, which are a special kind of report you can define at the end of any workflow that summarizes the most important results. So before we get started, let's make sure we have Galaxy open and we have a fresh history. So if you see some other history here, click on the plus icon to start a new one and just give it a name you'll remember, uh, like workflow reports. Okay, second thing we need is the training manual. So all the steps I do today, you can read in there as well, uh, plus some additional information probably. Um, so you can access the training materials always at the top bar of Galaxy uh, with this graduation cap icon. Uh, so this opens the, uh, the training materials website. And to find our tutorial for today, we're gonna scroll down to the Galaxy Tips and Tricks section and click on the topic called Using Galaxy and Managing Your Data. So there are a lot of short tutorials on here that really focus on using one uh, feature of Galaxy. Um, so you see here, there's things about uploading data, histories, managing your data if you have lots of data sets. Uh, and we're gonna go scroll down to the workflows section and find workflow reports and then click on the computer icon to open the training materials. Okay, so uh, like I said, workflow result uh, reports allow you to summarize the most important results of a workflow. So this is especially useful if you have very large workflows if or if you are sharing them with people who are maybe not so familiar with either Galaxy or the tools that uh, are used in the workflow. So then instead of having to look through the Galaxy history and find the interesting results and clicking on the eye icon for each of them to view the results, uh, you can define a workflow report that takes the most important results and puts them in a single page, a single web page report. So in this tutorial, we will show you how you can view such reports, uh, how you can define them or change them, and how you can share them with others. Um, so before we can do anything, we will need a example workflow. Um, so here we're just going to take a simple workflow, which is the workflow used in the Galaxy 101 for everyone tutorial. Um, and we'll just use that as an example. So let's import that workflow first. So if we scroll down to this first hands on box, uh, you can copy the URL and then go back to Galaxy by clicking anywhere outside of the um, tutorial window and going to this workflow uh, menu at the top. So this gives you a list of all your workflows. So you may already have some workflows here or it may be empty, it doesn't matter. Uh, either way, we're gonna click on this import button at the top right. And this will give us a menu with various options. So we can either upload a file from our computer if we've downloaded the workflow previously, or you can just provide a URL like we have. So we'll uh, paste in the URL there and then hit, hit this button, uh, import workflow. And then it will import it and bring you back to this list. So you should see now at the top of the list, uh, DTN training, Galaxy 101 for everyone imported from URL. So this is our workflow. Um, so the exact contents of this workflow is not really important right now. The only important thing is that here, uh, we have a data set, we've performed some data manipulation and some plotting on this data set. Um, so we're gonna make a workflow report that shows these plots, shows some of these tables uh, at the end of each workflow run. Um, so first let's get a feel of this uh, workflow a little bit. So let's run it once um, without doing anything. Uh, and then we will create a report and see how that looks. So let's go back to the training material by clicking on this hat icon again. Um, and if you scroll down now to the second hands-on box, um, there's a link here as a note, a link to uh, an iris.csv file. So we're gonna hit the copy button and import that. So on the left side of Galaxy, you have this upload data button. Um, you click on that, then choose paste fetch data at the bottom, paste in the URL and hit start. So this is a, a small file, should be relatively quick. 
And we will just run this workflow once. Um, there's always a sort of default report that is made at the end. Um, this is not customized yet, of course, because Galaxy doesn't know what your workflow uh, is about, but it'll give you some standard information like what the inputs were, how long it took to run, um, things like that. Uh, so we'll show you how to do that too. So when it's done uploading, we can just have a very quick look at this file. Uh, the details aren't important. Um, but you'll see that it's a tabular file with some information about different flower species, different uh, iris species. So we have some information about the length and width of the petals and the sepals uh, for different um, species. Okay, so first step, let's run this workflow that we have. So we're going to go back to this workflow at the top. You're going to, at the top of the list should be the uh, tutorial we, or the workflow we update, uploaded. And uh, we're going to hit run workflow here at the right, this play button. And this tutorial only takes one input, so we'll just give it the iris.csv file and run it. Okay, so I already selected the iris file. Um, you can click on this expand to full workflow form if you want to see which tools it's going to, to perform. It's going to do some format conversion, some data manipulation steps cutting and grouping and then two scatter plots are made okay so just run hit run workflow um and you can see the progress here and then we'll just wait until um everything is finished so it shouldn't take too too long uh, a couple minutes and you see already here uh, everything that will be created so just wait a few minutes, maybe uh, grab a cup of coffee, but um, shouldn't take more than two or three minutes. Okay, so once your workflow is finished, we can have a quick look at the outputs. So you see here that it's made to scatter plots, so we can view them quickly. So there's just some nice plots about the data set. And if you click on the unique data set, um, it shows a list of all the different unique uh, species in the data set. Um, and the group outputs give something similar. They, they group it per species and then give um, the average value for some of these um, uh, data points in the in the um, data set. Okay, so these are the kinds of things, tables and images we would like to include in our report. Um, now, every uh, workflow already has a very simple default report. So First, I will show you how to access this report, and then we can work on uh, adapting it to customizing it to what we want. So um, to get the workflow reports, uh, you click on user here, and then you scroll down to workflow invocation. So an invocation is a run of a workflow. So you click on this, and here, every workflow you've run uh, across different histories is listed here. Um, so you should find the one um, at the top that you just ran. If we click on that here, you see a little bit more information. So um, you see here um, that it's completed. So these bars should be green if it's done. Um, and you see here, view report. Uh, so if we click on this view report, these words, we will be taken to sort of the default report that Galaxy has made for our workflow. Um, so here, this is what a Galaxy report looks like. Um, so it gives some information about the title of the workflow that was run um, and some information about uh, when it was run and the, the unique ID. Um, and here it gives us uh, the input data set. So it gives the beginning. If we scroll down, we can see here the input data set that was used. Um, it shows already some outputs um, and information about the workflow. So this is already a very good start, um, but you'll notice that, for example, the, uh, the images are missing here. Okay, so we would want to um, edit this report, include the images, and probably, especially if we want to share this with other people, we would like to add some text around all these boxes to say uh, what the outputs mean. Uh, for example, uh, what does 
this 50 here mean because it's not obvious so things like this you can do you can uh, add to the tutorials or sorry to the uh, workflow report you can add text and sections and anything really that you want and maybe we also want to hide things like the input data set because um, yeah, that's maybe less um, interesting than the results so um, we can edit this so to do that we will go um, to workflow again so these workflow reports are defined together with the workflow. So if you download the workflow definition file after you've made changes to the workflow report, um, these live together. So if you then share the workflow with other people, you're also sharing the workflow report definition that you've made. So they will get the same uh, workflow report whenever they run this workflow. So um, we will go to the workflow um, menu. So you may have seen that when we were looking at the report itself, there was this little edit button, but that's really to edit the, that one specific workflow report for that run. But what we want to do is change the definition so that every time this workflow runs, uh, we get this updated workflow report at the end of it. So we are going to go to our um, workflow list again. This time we're going to click on the link and we are going to go to the edit menu. So you may already be familiar with this workflow editor. So here you can really see uh, in this block diagram a little bit all the different steps that this workflow uh, does. So you can um, zoom out a little bit in this control here. So you really see here Iris data set, uh, format conversion, data mesh, scatter plot, all the steps. Okay, so but that is all fine. We just want to edit the report. So we go to the top right here. So you have all these icons and the third one here is the edit report. So um, this is the definition of the report. So this is something called markdown. So that's a simple markup language um, to define um, text-based outputs. So you see here, this will be the title. And this is some, um, this is the default. So the, the inputs, the outputs, and the workflow, that's the default report that you get for any workflow. And on the left here, you see a lot of different components that you could add. So you can say, uh, for example, um, job metrics, or maybe you want the Galaxy version. So here, and then it'll add uh, this block for you that generates the Galaxy version. And you can type in this, so you can, uh, let's change this um, standard title. So if we know this is going to be every time about irises, we can say it iris report. Or if you know that your users may use this for different types of flowers, you would say uh, flower report. So, and this is really up to you. And uh, it's often also nice to add some text. So you can introduce it a little bit the, the workflow and the, the components below. So yeah, just type anything here. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but let's just play around with this and type here anything really. Um, so below is the report about oh, sepal and petal length of flowers. For example, this can be anything. This is just an example. Um, okay, so let's also at the top here. So wherever you put your cursor, if you then click a component on the left to add, it'll be added at that point. So let's start off with the Galaxy version, which is always nice to, to remember if you're looking back. Uh, also, if you have to write up for your paper and you have to um, give all these um, sort of data. Um, so current time is also an option. So you see here as a generate time. Um, yeah, so you can you can explore this a little bit and play around. Um, so we could also say, okay, let's just remove the inputs. I don't think that's interesting. And say under the workflow outputs, um, we would like to also uh, add images because we know those were missing. Um, so we can click here on image. Okay, so here you see uh, you can select output labels, but we don't really see anything that looks like an image. Okay, 
So this is because we have not added labels to our workflow outputs yet. Um, so anything you might want to use in a report, you have to edit the workflow first to add a label and then it'll uh, appear in this list. So this is to make, like if you have a workflow that gives hundreds of outputs, you don't want that list that long. So you would label sort of the uh, most important uh, outputs here. So we will go back and uh, show you how to add labels um, before. Um, but just uh, for now, let's cancel that. Um, you can add any more text you want here. So it's always nice to maybe say before uh, you can make a subheading with two hash uh, symbols saying, okay, uh, or workflow stats or something um, with the Galaxy version and Galaxy time. Okay, so we made a, a few small changes. Um, so we want to save this. Um, so you can safely now uh, return to workflow with this X. And when you're in this workflow menu again, you can save, save the workflow, including the workflow report definition. Okay, so uh, we can um, just run this again, just to see um, how our changes affected the workflow uh, report. So we can we can do that directly from this workflow edit menu as well. So there's again this run workflow um, icon here. So we can click on this run workflow. We are again going to give it the the iris. Uh, .csv file as input. So this time you will have to change it back again and run workflow again. So again, we will wait till that is finished and then look at the report. Okay, so once the second run of the workflow is also finished, you we can view the report again and see our changes. So if you didn't navigate away here like I did, you may be uh, able to access it from uh, from the, the workflow status there. But um, the way you can always get back to it is under user menu here at the top, workflow invocations. And um, it'll be the most recent one. Um, and then we click on this to expand it. And we go to view report here again. And let's see. So you can see now in this report, uh, the changes we made. So we changed the title here. Uh, we added a bit of text and some workflow stats. So this is the Galaxy version and the time that this was run. It probably would have been more clear if we added a little bit of text around these values to say this was run on Galaxy version this. Um, so we'll do that in our next edit. Um, so again, we would like to edit this report um, to include uh, the images from the workflow. Uh, but like I said, first we will have to add workflow labels to make sure um, they show up in our list. So we're going to go to the workflow menu again here at the top. We are going to select our uh, workflow and go to the edit menu again, the editor. So you want the two scatter plot tools, um, the outputs for those to be labeled so that we can use them more easily in our report. So we um, you can always zoom in and out a little bit if you need here and you can move the boxes if they're stacked on top of each other. So you see that we have two scatter plot um, tools in this workflow. And if you click on one of the boxes on the right, you'll see the settings for that um, that run, that tool. So here, this one for us is the uh, makes a plot with as title a sepal length as function of sepal width. And the one below it for us, if we go, um, if we scroll down, we see this is the petal length uh, as a function of the petal width. Okay, but how do we add a label now? So we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and we're going to say configure uh, output. So here you see there are two outputs. Um, and 
at the top here, you can say, uh, you can add a label. So these two outputs correspond to these two that you see in the box here. So uh, output one will be the PNG and output two will be um, anything else you made, maybe PDF. Um, so in our case, well, let's use the PNG output uh, for our report. So we're gonna add a label to that. So go to configure output, output one, and add here a label. So since we also want to distinguish between the two plots, let's make this label also reflect what is plotted. So if you sc uh, scroll up, okay, this was petal length. So we're just going to call it um, petal plots, uh, plot, and maybe uh, PNG. And you see that as I'm typing this, the uh, value also changed in the box here. So you know that you've got the correct output of the two. So let's do the same for the other uh, ggplot scatterplot output. So again, click on the box and the right, scroll down till you see the configure output sections. We'll take output one and label it this time as uh, sql plot. sql plot uh, png output. Okay, and again, you saw that it changed here. Okay, so um, those are our labels added. So let's just save the workflow to be safe. Um, and then we can also right away edit the workflow report again to include um, these two images now in the report. So we go to this edit report button again next to the save icon. Um, so you see here uh, our previous report definition. Um, okay, so in the workflow outputs, let's um, start with the um, plot. So we can make a section here again, we can say, uh, Sepal plot, oops, Sepal plot. And let's try to insert now the image again. So on the left are all the uh, components you can insert into a um, report like this. So we're gonna click on image. And you see that this time our list is longer and now includes the two labels we just added. So we'll add, uh, select here the Sepal plot um, output, PNG output. Um, so here you see this, was added and this will show the, uh, the plot. And let's do the same for the petal plot. Again, click on image here, select the, the petal plot and hit continue. Okay, so now hopefully it should add these two components also to our report. So if there are any other changes you would like to make at this point, so I mentioned it would have been nice maybe if we said as uh, have some introductory text here around the Galaxy version. So we can say this workflow was run on Galaxy version colon uh, and this workflow was run at. Okay, just so it makes a little bit more sense for people reading this, uh, this workflow. Okay, so when you are happy with the way your uh, workflow report looks, again, you can click the X here to return to workflow. So any changes um, are still safe. You just have to make sure to hit the save button on this next window again, save workflow. Okay, so we're gonna run this workflow now one last time to show um, that the images are included. So again, let's um, hit run workflow. And again, let's uh, change the input to our very first data set, iris.csv, and hit run. Okay, so once this is done again, um, if you did not navigate away, so you would see here also uh, a link to, the, to view the report. But if you did navigate while waiting, navigate away from this page, um, you won't see this anymore. And the way you can always get there is via the user menu and then workflow invocations. Um, but let's click on view report here. We should now see all the last batch of changes we made. So you see that indeed now the text we added around here um, around the Galaxy version and the runtime uh, has been changed. And you see now that our plots are also there uh, with these section headings.
So great, that's it. So there are a lot more sort of different components you can add to this Galaxy report. So I encourage you to play around with these. And if you have questions, uh, ask them uh, in chat. Um, and so the final thing I want to show you is how to share this report. So there are two different ways to share. So if you want to share the configuration so that when people um, run the workflow themselves, that they also get this report that shows um, yeah, everything here that shows the um, the plots and this basic information and has this title, then um, you just share the workflow in the way you're used to sharing a workflow. So either you can download the workflow and send it via email or whatever, or you can create a share link. So just as a reminder, if you go to the workflow menu again at the top, click on the workflow, and click share. There are several options here. So you can uh, get a URL that you can send to people. Um, see what here would say make workflow accessible. Um, if you want this publicly available, so for instance, if this is part of a published workflow for a paper, or you just want everybody on Galaxy to be able to see it, you can also select this one. Um, and this is a link you can share with people. Or if you want to just share it with maybe one or two other users on this, um, with your collaborators on this server, you can also give their email addresses here and they will be able to see it. Um, so that is if you want to share the uh, report definition, uh, the workflow itself with the definition included. Now, one other thing, of course, you could do is you want to share um, one specific uh, report. So with uh, one specific run with one specific data set and you want to share those results. So there's a different way to do that. So we just need to go back to the report real quick. So we go to user workflow invocations, uh, click on the latest one here and go to view report. <clears throat> so if you want to share this specific report that was run today at 11.28, um, you can go here to the top, you see this uh, edit button. So here you can, first of all, you can make changes to this uh, specific report. So if in this case, you would like to add some more, um, so this doesn't affect at all uh, the next time you run the workflow, but it does affect this one um, report. So here we can say, okay, we had it a little bit um, generic, but in this case, it's the iris report. So we can change that if we want. Uh, and we can save it. And now it is saved as a Galaxy page. So this um, this is um, yeah a way to share these reports uh, right, and pages. So now let's look at this for a second. If we click on here, um, so again you see your public URL. So you can you can share this URL with other people, and they'll be able to view this report. Um, just waiting for it to load. And then you see here, okay, this is uh, here. It's, you see the change we made at that point that we shared, Iris report um, and everything. So now you can uh, share the link to this with anybody and they'll be able to see the workflow report for your specific run of the uh, workflow with your specific data set. Um, yeah, and if you want to find this back later, so let's say you navigate it away from this, you're like, oh, I, I had a Galaxy page, where is that now? So um, you can go to um, user and then pages, and then you will be taken back to this list of pages that you may have. Um, yeah, you can add a manual pages too if you want. Um, and again, if you click on this drop down, you can say uh, share or publish here as well. Uh, just again, share with specific um, users if you want uh, here with individual users by email or I say make this page accessible so that people that have the link that anybody who has a link can view it. And if this is like something you really want to show off, uh, you can make a, a page available in the published pages. So if we do this, um, you see here the published pages, and you can also get to the published pages page um, under um, here, share data at the top pages. So here you can see every page that other people on this Galaxy server have shared, uh, made published on the server. 
and then ours will be included there if you want. But by default, it's just the, the URL. <clears throat> Okay, so you see here, this is the one we just shared, and here are some uh, published pages that other people have shared. Um, so anybody on the server can now see all these pages. And of course, if you want to stop sharing, you can you can also do that. Um, so I hope now you got a good first look at uh, workflow reports. Uh, you've seen how to view these reports, how to customize them, how to define them, uh, and how to share them. So uh, I hope you start using these. These are very, it's a really nice feature, um, especially if you're sharing your workflow with other people. And uh, yeah, play around with it and uh, feel free to ask us any questions in chat. Thank you for listening. <laughs>